Hi, welcome to chapter two in Spark to Flame, Dancing Flame. Now, I would like to share with you guys that I actually am a belly dancer and a fire performer. I love my creative expression. My personal creative expression is something that inspires me, encourages me, lifts me up when I am down, and truly gives me life and passion. We all have our own way of expressing ourselves. For me, teaching is also a great way to emotionally express me. To say, I have something that I wanna share with the world is a way for me to connect with the world and with those around me. And it really fulfills my life and my heart with purpose. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this now and in future chapters. So it's going to be important that we really start to connect now to really beginning to shift, to now take our experience and our self work and begin to understand that when we express ourselves, we are sharing our gifts. And that is the lesson of fire. So in chapter two, um, we talk about what is passion. When you think of passion, you think of things like desire, romantic love, and fighting for what you want. All of these things are true. What I want to focus on is being passionate about something that fills you with love. Well, not romantic love, not motherly love. This is a different kind of love. This is a love for life a love for self, and a love for self-expression. Where do I find that love? I can find it in my heart, but I also can find it in my will, in my solar plexus. This is where I pull from. This is how I find my passion. And like I've talked about before, I am sure, <laughs> to you in classroom settings and, and maybe even in videos ahead, you'll see it as well, but when we're passionate about something, we are more successful at it. When we have passion, we also have the strength of will, the strength of courage. So passion is like a fire within us that is just burning. And it might just start out as a little bit of a spark and then burn into an actual flame and then become a raging, roaring fire that cannot be stopped. Passion has all kinds of levels and all types of intensity. It's up to you to learn where you want your passion to go. I talk about the three ways of the seeker in book one. And number two is strength of will. This is what I'm talking about. Connecting with your passion. Connecting with that courageous spirit that's within you. And each of us has our own way to go about it. Our emotional express expression is a really important life key. If I don't express myself emotionally and I trap it down, then how can I really truly be happy? How can I know desire? How can I understand true happiness, fulfillment? How can I even understand or grasp courage or strength? My expression and how I show myself to the world is a huge part of who I am. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, uh, this, this, in this, you know, person who is completely, you know, fills the room with their energy and, it, you know, is, is outwardly outgoing and, and kind of, you know, filling the space with just them. That's not what we have to be. We can be introverted and still be expressing ourselves. We can do it quietly. We can do it loudly. We can do it somewhere in between. I think it's really important that you guys understand I'm not asking you to be the cheerleader of the group, but I am asking you to speak your voice and to be your true self. Um, we all have different ways of, of expressing ourselves. And um, one of the key ways that we can express ourselves is through an artistic expression. Huh. An artistic expression. One of the funny things is, is that I never thought of myself as an artist until I really started to work with the element of fire. Why? Why, you wonder? 
you know, I honestly can't answer that question. I have danced my almost my entire life. Um, I did color guard in high school. I was a cheerleader at some point in my life. Um, and I started writing, you know, even though I danced for most of my actual life, I never considered it an art. I never saw myself as an artist. I know it's just silly, but when I started writing, I recognized that what I was doing was creating art. Even though I don't claim to be an amazing writer, by any means, I write from my heart. I write from passion. And once I understood that, that's when I started to recognize how art is such a key expression for ourselves. Um, on page 30 of the book, I actually talk about a list of different ways we can create um, and create art in our lives. But, you know, I think it's important you guys recognize that we all have an artistic expression. I think it's a matter of identi identifying it as art, not as, I just, I don't have anything. Oh, I have a hobby. Well, guess what? Most likely your hobby is part of your art. Um, if you don't have a art or you don't have a hobby and you can't seem to find one that connects, you know, really challenge yourself because what makes you feel passionate, what makes you excited to wake up every day, you know, that kind of thing may be related to your art. You just got to find what that looks like. You got to dig a little deeper. We also have different artistic personalities, which I also talk about on page 31. And I think it's important just to touch on that um, and to understand that you can be one of these things or, or, or a few of these things, but kind of play with them, review them, and start to understand what kind of inner artist you really are. The, the exercise and, and the work there is, um, which exercise five, emotional expression, that's all there for you to help you self-identify, um, to help you start to think and process what this could look like for you. You know, I'm always working in layers. Right, so mentally we've got to have that connection. Emotionally, it has to begin to connect, right? And then it has to be a physical connection, and that's the expression itself. So it takes a little bit of time, and so I, I create the exercises. I talk about the different personalities of expression to help you begin to understand what this looks like for you in your life. So I'm excited to see what you guys all come up with, and then of course I'm going to challenge you to be working on, to work on creatively expressing yourself artistically expressing yourself um, as we go through the journey of this work because I feel like it's so essential and so important to your happiness um, and to you evolving in this work. The last part, I think it's really important. I talk about direction and, you know, when I look at the compass and I look at our internal compass, you know, we were, we were working with the element of air which had us moving in the direction of east. And now we're shifting, we're shifting to go south. And this is a bit of a different energy. And this is where we shift. This is when we really go south and really go into the belly of fire and really begin to understand how it's going to affect us and how it's gonna change our lives forever. Never looking at how we walk, never looking at our emotional expression, the way we create or our connection to the higher self and the universe and universal consciousness. Everything shifts and changes within this element. So I'm really excited to see where it takes us. So that is chapter two. We're gonna move into chapter three now in the same video. Why, why not? In chapter three, we call it release. And in this chapter, um, it's a little bit shorter, but this is when I talk about letting go. This is when we really start to recognize that we have to separate what is truly important to ourselves and what is not. As we begin to do that, as we begin to simplify our life and filter out the baggage and the unnecessary turmoil and chaos, we begin to feel lighter. And when we feel lighter, we're able to see clearer. And when we see clearer, we are then able to identify important focuses in our life. With those focuses, we then begin to attract. We attract the things that we need to shift to the next frequency, to raise our vibration, to truly evolve as spirits of fire. Exercise six is one of my favorite exercises. This has been a game changer, a life giver to me. When I do this exercise, I am able to separate myself 
I'm able to finally breathe. I'm able to find the stillness in my mind and hear my inner voice and find my direction. This is really essential as navigators of life that we have tools that can give this to us. So in the MP3, you'll be able to have this video or this recording of this meditation as well as you can do it in classwork if you do the in-person classes with me. I highly recommend this exercise. Um, once you learn it, it's pretty easy. Um, after practicing it a few times, it's pretty easy to create that release um, on your own in a pretty quick way to help you function through life. So definitely hope that that serves you well. I think it's really important that we understand the cycle of fire. And, you know, we talk about how fire destroys, right? But it also germinates and it cleanses, it purifies. It prepares us for new growth. And it's scary. It's really, really scary. But at the same time, if you learn to embrace it and you make it a companion, all of a sudden it's your, it's like your warrior. It's your, it's, it's your, you know, protector in so many ways. So we embrace fire in this book and in this work and we, we trust. We believe so much in this work that we know we will not get burned. We recognize that it is here for cleansing and that the fire will never truly harm us. It will just lighten and illuminate our world and our path. Lightens the load, illuminates the journey. It's a good thing. The last part of the book or this chapter here in chapter three, we do exercise seven. We do the sacred circle. And this is an exercise we've done before. And to remind you and kind of recall with you, I don't know if you can see it. It kind of, it's a weird shape on the book. Um, it's like more like an oval, but we want to draw a circle in our journal and in our magical journal that we write in all the time, right? And we, we want to write that circle. That circle is going to be for us to help identify the things that we need to have in our lives, that we want to have in our lives, and the things that we need to start removing out of our lives. The releasing meditation should have helped, um, you know, doing the work in chapter one and chapter two should have helped you now where you now can re-identify the things that belong in your circle and the things that do not. And so it's time to make that separation for yourself so that you, as you move into the next section, you have done this work already. So now you have laid a beautiful foundation. So chapters one through three, I've kept you pretty busy, right? We've gone through seven exercises already and we are gonna jump into chapter four and, uh, and, and really kind of take it to the next level. So I hope you are ready. I hope this is feeling good for you. I hope you're able to process this work. If for any reason you need to slow down and take a couple more days, then do so. You know, take some time to really process everything. If you need to go back and redo an exercise, if the release meditation, you feel like there's more work that needs to be done, then do it. You know, that's one of those meditations I'm gonna always encourage you to go back and do again and again because it does help us move forward. All right, everybody, thank you so much and I will see you in chapter four.